leaf, you're gonna, you're gonna find a leaf so much easier because it's taken me years to, I mean, there's so many different kinds of leaves. I mean, look at all the, the different vein structures that you have. How many of you have been challenged by leaves? Anybody that, yeah, okay, okay. Well, you might feel a little better after tonight. Um, a couple of things I just want to show you here. Um, I do a lot of, I keep, don't throw away your, your pieces of watercolor paper. Use them as testers. And, um, you know, write down the names of the paints, which you decide on, you know. Look at the combinations. And don't start painting until you're really satisfied with your colors. And so I, I use these all the time, and I reuse them. Um, I do something like this for a painting. In other words, I create a color chart for myself before I even begin. And it's very, very helpful, because then you're just not fooling around, trying to figure out every time you make a move what, you know, what color you're gonna use. Um, blue tack. How many of you know about blue tack? Okay. This is the stuff you want to really lift color um, and pencil, um, but pencil rather, pencil up without damaging your watercolor paper. And you can get it uh, through Amazon. It's great. What did it comes you call like it this. Again? It's called um, Blue Tack. B L U Tack. And I, I've saved many paintings by using Blue Tack. Um, sponges, um, sandpaper. Um, <laughs> for, um, I'll tell you what this is for. This is for uh, spots on fall leaves. Um, and you can get those spots by using the secret weapon, colored pencil. And a lot of people, you know, I don't tell anybody that I've got a little bit of splatter in with a colored pencil, but um, not only does it make spots, but if you use Faber-Castell, you want to use Faber-Castell um, because you can put water with it. You don't want Prismacolor, you want Faber-Castell. Um, you can actually use a very dark green to tighten your veins. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to get really, really close to the vein without losing it. And so sometimes I revert to a very sharp uh, Faber-Castell. And you can always do these little templates. You know, if you want to spray or splatter or whatever, you can make yourself a little template. Um, keep, keep a record. This is my, uh, I'll pass that around, observational drawing. So that, you know, you, you really think about it and you, you look at the leaf and you study it and you make, um, make some, um, some uh, what I want to call tracings. You want to do some tracing, especially at the back of the leaf because that's what you'll see, where you'll see the veins. Um, and you want to know your colors. I do these color charts and, um, and this helps sometimes. I keep them, they hang up, I hang them up, you know, over my painting table. Um, and, um, and oh, lots of these, lots of these, lots of tracings. I, I can't tell you how wonderful they are in the winter. Because if you want to do a leaf, let's say you want to do a hydrangea in the winter and you have tracings, then you have a really good uh, pattern of the little veins, the tiny veins. So, so think ahead on those kinds of things. So I'll, um, I'm going to um, start with a basic leaf. I'm going to go through the steps. And remember that leaves are not perfect. Okay, so you don't, want le you don't want perfect leaves. You want holes in them. You want spots. You want, you know, um, but you want to capture, if you're going to do realism, you want to capture as many of the veins as you can. And that's the tricky part. <laughs> it's like getting the veins. Um, so, um, can you all see this? Can you all see this page here? Okay. You need more ultramarine. Okay. You can see how that's very blue. You see how blue that is? Um, can you, you see the? It's kind of a blue green right there. All right. Now, if if I decide I want something more green, I'll go into my believe it or not, phthalo. And I never thought. <laughs> because I, I was like an anti-phalo phalo grain person for so many years, I never thought I would find myself using so much phalo. But I gave up almost, not 100%, but um, this one here. I'm sure you all know what this is, sap green. Y'all can see the sap green. It's too bright. 
you know, most leaves, you're not gonna find um, sap green unless you tone it down with red. And so if you're gonna use sap green, you really need to get into some red, alizarin for instance, and make it, you know, murk it up a little. This is kind of a brownie green, a brownie version of sap green. So, um, so the first thing you do, simple rose leaf, simple, simple. Although they're not simple. <laughs> they're not simple when you really get into the intricacies of them. And you can see from, um, if you look at um, some of my rose paintings over here, you'll see um, how detailed the leaves are and, and it, how many hours and days it took to do just, I mean, I can spend eight hours on one leaf, easy. Um, so this is a simple rose, um, simple rose leaf, and I've enlarged it. And I'm looking at the sun coming from the left. And that's the first thing you have to decide. Now, there are nuances here. The sun could be coming from the left and be a little darker at the bottom, and then it could be shadow from the right. But I'm just going to say the sun comes from the left and the shadow comes from the right, just to simplify it, OK, and to sort of get going here. Um, and, and so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet, um, I'm just going to you know, wet um, this, my whole thing, my whole um, side. Let me get a bigger brush here. Let me get my big one. And I, I have masked a little bit um, for some of the holes. Um, I try not to mask so much, but um, it's, sometimes it helps, especially like for doing a demo like this. So this is just my undercoat. This is just my very first coat. And I don't think it's bright enough for sap green. So um, I'm, I'm gonna go with my sort of phthalo mix. And, and this is just easy, because this is just applying a, a coat of paint. And you know, the serrations are really, in a, on a rose leaf, the serrations are often red, reddish purple, brown, a little brown sometimes. Connie, can that mirror move at all? Um, we're, not, we're not seeing the OK, you're not seeing my, so can we pull it back? Can you, could you see it here? No, because you were standing over it, so. Oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay. That's okay. Now you can see it, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, I'm, all right. I'll sit. <laughs> I usually stand when I paint, so. But yeah, I'll, um, I'll just sit down here. And so just try to get into those serrations, okay? And then um, um, I'm gonna do the other side uh, with more of a blue cast. And so I'm gonna, let me bring this over here. I'm gonna wet it. And I'm not doing the midrib. The midrib is in the center. I'm not going to touch the midrib. Um, and I have got, you can see that you can see my pencil lines for the, the little tiny um, veins. But I did that. I usually don't do that at this point. I usually um, observe the leaf. I like to observe and then to draw in these this faint lines. But I made them a little darker because I want to be sure that you can see them. Um, so this is, I don't want this too blue. But yeah, so I can. It's kind of a green blue. And like I said, if this was darker here, I'd have this over here too, but in a little light up there. But you just have to do um, one at a time. And this is the easy part. <laughs> this is the easy part. Gotta get into those. Just pull it down. And I might leave the outside a little lighter because it might be a little lighter on the outside. OK, so there. All right, so there's my first step. And so here I am. Now, I did actually use a little sap green on this side here. <laughs> and um, now I'm going to show you the, um, the process by which you lift color, which is so important. Um, and the little veins, these little, um, these little tiny veins, that come between these bigger sections. Can you see that? Can you see that there are uh, veins, the sort of major veins that go out to the, um, to the edge of the leaf? 
but there are also um, these little tiny intricate those are the ones that you want to get if you want a realistic leaf you want to get all those nuances usually the little veins curve inward towards the middle part of the leaf okay so but not always and that's <laughs> that's the you know the fun part when you you know that's why it's important to have a leaf because you can see you know, you can observe you, especially from the back to to look from the front is is tough but from the back you can really really study it and i'm trying to get almost perfect with that <laughs> with that pattern but you you know it's almost impossible to be perfect but someday maybe i love that pattern um, so so now i've decided um, that this is the light and this is the dark, I want to put a shadow line on my dark side. So I'm going to use a smaller brush. And so I'll just get a little darker of this. This is like, make it a little bit, um, you know, I've got a little bit more. And I'm just going to, I'm going to tell, I'm going to say, this tells me um, that this is my dark side. And as I come down that mid rib, I'm going to soften. You don't want hard lines, just you always want to soften. And you want to come down. Make sure it's dark enough. Okay. And then I will just soften that edge. Okay. All right. Okay, now, now the, um, you can see it's starting to take a little form and, um, and now I'm interested in the cushions because one of the things about a rose leaf is that they have cushions. Let's see, this is, um, this is sort of a, here's a, a rose leaf, but it doesn't, and yeah, you can see it. So let me pass this around. You can see how this puffiness Look, look, at the, look at the front and, and see how in this leaf, there's like a, a, a part that is darker and puffy, and then the top part between the veins is lighter. So, you probably all think I'm crazy. <laughs> I, can, I look at those nuances, but that's important if you're gonna paint a realistic leaf. Hmm. Now you can see that, the, see that little puff, that little, sort of um, how yeah. it buckles. <laughs> yeah. And some of the leaves are much more cushiony than others. I mean, some have a, a real pucker. And so, and, and, and of course, leaves that are broken and are, are you know, have holes and are ripped, the, the edges are ripped and torn in some way. I mean, there are all these little imperfections, you know, th that's a pretty perfect leaf. So, but the imperfect leaves are fun to paint too, the ones that are, you know, not in good shape. Okay, so now the, the eradicator. And Rosemary, <laughs> Rosemary's gonna love me, um, if there is a Rosemary. I don't know if there's a Rosemary, at, um, a real Rosemary, it's over here. Um, and I'm going to show you how I do the cushions. And notice, on this particular leaf, and I studied the leaf, the, cushion, the dark part is on the top. But on this side, that shadow part is on the base of that, uh, the, those, those particular veins. So um, I'm gonna, I'll finish this side. Let me um, show you how it goes, okay. So um, I wanna wet this thoroughly. And see, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm only interested right now in that swing vein. The one that's swinging out this way. Okay, I, need, I do need my glasses on this. Sorry for the, I'm terrible about putting my glasses on and off. I wanna make sure it's really wet. I want the whole thing, I wanna just make sure it's really wet. Otherwise, I will not have time to lift with the eradicator brush. Okay, and I want a fair amount of paint. And I'm gonna go right against the vein, see that? Gonna go right against it, all the way to the end. There we go. Now, I've got my 
my beautiful eradicators. And you can pull this way. You see how I'm pulling in a, that with a flat? Or you can use a side pull, which I prefer. And um, the reason why I prefer the side pull is because it's a little more irregular. I don't want a straight line along that shadow. You know, I don't, I don't want a straight line. I want it to be irregular. And um, I want um, it to look as natural as possible. That's the goal, is to be as natural as possible. And then I'll go down here to, um, hold on, let me get my, now this is the tiny one. Now the tiny one, the tiny eradicator, you know, gets into small spaces. But when I'm at this point, I'll use the wider one. You know, I'll use the bigger one. Um, but you can see that it helps so much. Now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna work the cushions so you can watch me. Okay, now this side is brighter. I'm gonna, but I'm not gonna be, I don't want sap. I want this to be a little darker uh, on the, I'm not a big sap, I must have, maybe I thought you would see it better if I use sap. Okay, so I'm gonna wet this and you do one at a time. You do not want to wet the whole thing, okay? one at a time. And you don't want it too drippy, so I might just pick up some of the, the soak and wipe it on my towel. I want it really, really nice and wet, but not drippy. And I'm gonna go in here, and I'm gonna lay my shadow line right there along that ridge. Okay, and pull, um, and I'm gonna pull this way. I can pull, I can, I can start pulling. I'm actually, in the, in the action of pulling, in some respects, I'm starting to show you the little tiny veins. I'm, I'm, they're starting to sort of show up. You know, I haven't, I haven't drawn them in yet, but I'm going in the direction of those little tiny veins. Um, now, if I use this one, the, this eradicator, um, I could lift, this is a little stiffer, lift a little more, but, um, you know when to use, you know, the little one versus the big one. Any questions so far? Anybody, any, any questions so far? What, what paper are you using? Um, this is um, Arches, Arches Hot Press. Hot, hot Press. Yeah, and I, I work on Hot mm. Press almost all the time. Okay. I've tried a few other brands, but, uh, and I, I, mm, it's, I don't think the Arches is as good as it used to be, but um, I'm okay with what I've got here. So, okay, so I'm gonna do one more to show you, again, the cushioning effect. And then what I'm gonna do is show you how I start to um, work the, the, little, the little veins. See, and it's really fun, because the puffiness is, is gonna be made uh, automatically by, you know, just, your darks and your lights. And I'm, I'm pulling this one, pulling it along just like that. And if it's too, if I, if I feel like I've got too much color up here, I can always, you know, that's why you need good paper. Because in botanical art, you do a lot of lifting. And um, if you don't have good paper, it's not gonna be easy. So you can see how this is starting to, to emerge. I mean, I, well, I don't want to do that. You can see, I forget, you can see it. <laughs> you know, it's like being in a, um, um, you know, wanting to show something, but you can see it. Um, all right, so then I look at this and I decide to go back again because it's not really good enough to, you don't get enough shadow on a first pass along these. You have to go back. So you can see on this one, like these are not, this one got a little darker and a little bit bluer. I'm gonna to try to blue these up, make them a little bluer because it'll uh, work better with this. Um, but I need to, to, to darken that at least one more time before I really, really have it. So um, I'm going to, um, I'll go up here. And I'm, it's the same process. I'm gonna wet. But I'm, uh, before I do that, I want to make sure my paint is a little bit darker. 
because you want to get a little darker as you go. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, there's some more of that. And it's kind of a khaki. Um, this is kind of a, a little bit of a khaki green. I want a little more yellow. Don't want it too khaki. Got to have a little bit of bright in there. Okay. So I'm going to wet. Uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll go to this, this one right here. Actually, let me add a little more blue because the blue is so dominant down at the bottom. I didn't realize I was mixing a little different color. Okay, so I'm going to wet it again. And I'm going right over my, um, and I do not want, you do not want to lose your, um, your highlight area. Okay, so I want to get it right into that, right into that um, area there. Okay, and then, again, it's the eradicator. And what would you do without the eradicator? I, I, what would I do without, and again, I'm pulling down. And this time, you see how now the contrast between this area here, which is light, and I do need to put some dark in here, and I do need to do the cushion there. But look at the, diff, the contrast. And, and that's what you're, you're looking for. Um, you're looking for this leaf to get dimension and puffiness. And, um, and you know, because, because when you look at these leaves, I mean, this is a, a hibiscus from my yard. Look at the look at if you look at the back, you'll see, you know, all that little puffs. See all the little puffs, the little puck, puckerings, and that's what you want to get. You want to try to get that. Some leaves have more than others, and um, this one is the potato vine, and this has quite a few puckers too. Um, now, fall leaves are a completely different story. You know, they're, you'll have to look at my portfolio over there to see. Um, some of the fall leaves because I've done some brown ones and some curly ones. They're the fun ones to do, the broken ones. Um, they are the biggest challenge with, with a leaf, to paint a leaf and to get, um, you know, all the nuances. But I, I use a, um, I use a uh, iPad and I take photographs with my iPad which gives me a bigger screen and um, I try to take pictures of the front of the leaf the back of the leaf, um, the um, close-ups of the veins, and I have a whole, you know, notebook devoted to this. Um, so in the winter time, I still have references, and but nothing beats having the real thing. I got to tell you, because uh, it's the color that you can really do such a good job in matching when you have the real thing. Um, but start a folder if you're interested in this. Um, okay, so now, so now I've gotten, uh, let me just do one more here and then I'll show you the little ones, the little, the little veins and how I'm going to put them in. Just make sure you get the whole thing. I'm going to see if I can get to the serrations in that part too. Okay, so <coughs> you see how easy that is? It flows right on. It's wet enough. You just, you know, just let me get my eradicator. And just pull, 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 pull. I like to sometimes use the corner. I want it to be irregular there. Okay. So, and I'm going to go up here and do this one too, so that then I can um, complete that sort of line there. And, uh, and that's going to be a little lighter, a um, little bit lighter here because it's a first pass. Okay. And see how I'm pulling, pulling in towards the, I am uh, brushing in, inward towards that midrib. Okay, so we'll this, let this dry for a minute. And, oh, well, I have, all right, and then I'm going to put in some, some little veins. So. I'm using the same, um, you know, basically the same mix. 
Um, I'm not happy with this because that's too blue. Um, and I'm going to have to fix that. But I'm using the same uh, mix uh, that I have here on my palette for the little tiny veins. And let me go over here for a minute and just sort of start over here so I can show you um, that, um, see these veins here, they're going also towards the midrib. And they're not always, can you see that's like a half moon shape? Once you get to know the vein structure of the leaves, you'll have an inner sort of knowing about how these veins look. It's like, um, I've done so many of these that I can almost, uh, you know, guess what, you know, what looks right and what doesn't look right. And, um, and sometimes they curve right around and create sort of an oval and other times, um, you know, you'll see just a half one like that. Sometimes they will close. In other words, they'll come around and there'll be a closure. Um, and, and sometimes sort of a half moon look. Everyone is a little bit different. And so it, uh, the important thing is not to say, I am just going to go with the half moon all the way across. I'm just gonna go like that. You know, you see what I'm doing? You don't want that. You want more of, um, you want to look at the leaf and, and know um, the structure and the pattern. I'm from Boston, I'm sorry <laughs> to say that pattern. <laughs> but um, you want to get familiar with the different patterns. And, and this is just a rose leaf, but if you look at these leaves, um, I mean, the, the one that is, this is um, a peony. And this one is, is very easy to determine the pattern because it's, it's so um, lifted. I'll pass it, you know, pass it around and feel it. And it's, it's so, it's so um, elevated on the bottom of the leaf that it makes a, a very good tracing. So it makes a wonderful tracing uh, when you do it on um, tissue. And, um, and that's what you should be doing, keeping a record, a file of those. But you have to um, sort of know your subject and study it a little bit. Um, and see, over here, if I'm putting those lines in, here I'm coming down with sort of the same sort of color. Um, and I have looked at this. And a lot of times they're sort of up above and then they come down. They go like that. They go down, they come around, and, and they're, but they're, they're definitely pointing to the, the center. And that's what you want to you create subtly. And then if it's too strong, if you, if you put so many markings in that you feel that they're too strong, you can always glaze. You can always sort of push them back with a glaze, a very light glaze, which I've done from time to time. Um, so you can see that's the next step is to get those, those patterns in. To me, that's the fun part. I could spend hours just looking at the leaf and get, you know, and I generally will have the leaf in my hand when I'm doing this so that I can get it as accurate as possible. <coughs> okay, so then on rose leaves, any questions so far? Any, any questions? I, go ahead. How do you trace the leaf? You um, you trace the well, I use um, tissue paper. What I do is I, I make a rubbing. So, um, and then I go over it. So I'll do a rubbing right on the tissue paper with the leaf. I'll put the leaf underneath and I'll do a rubbing. Um, and then, down and then I, um, with the most dominant raised part of the leaf available. So okay. I wanna pick up as much detail as I can. And if I didn't do this, um, I, would ha I would be very, uh, it would be hard for me to know the patterns, you know, and every leaf is unique and different. Even if it's the same, even if it's a, an oak leaf and it came, came from the same tree, um, you want to make sure that if you've got a bunch of oak leaves in this particular design you're doing, that they're each unique, that you've looked at each one from an individual perspective and not 
try to um, just copy what you see as a, is a, the, the normal pattern of a leaf. Okay, it's too easy to do that. Um, but then is that graphite under there, or the actual leaf itself that transfers? Well, that actually is the there are two there are two different ways. Yeah, the the, the way I well there was a leaf here, um, and what I was what I was doing was I was actually outlining the leaf and then working on the, the pattern. But uh, most of the times I do a rubbing. And I keep all my rubbings in a file. And then I'll go back to the rubbing and I'll do a cleaner copy and I'll take all the little tiny little lines and, and put them in. So I have a record. Um, I don't know if I brought my, um, I didn't bring my, I have a notebook um, that is good because I keep that, that those in my notebook. Um, but you know, all the work that you do, like for instance, I wanted to point to some of these things too. In looking at your colors and your pigments and doing uh, swatches of green, as you, so you can see I've done here, that all of these, um, um, these are different, these are my paints and I've done swatches like this. So there are times when I refer to this um, and I look and I say, is there anything here that I want to use? And it took some time to do. I, it's a long time ago I did this, but um, I really should do it again because your paints change over time. But this is a good, a good activity and a good lesson. Um, and the other thing I just wanted to show you too is um, you can do, you know, I want to make sure I show you this. I was going to bring the painting, but I, it's so heavy. This was um, a, um, a bulletin board that I laid leaves on and photographed and then did an entire painting from, this, from the, the photos of, of these fall leaves. This was about a year ago. Um, it's very heavy, so I, I didn't bring it. But, you know, you can do a whole painting just focused on the subject of leaves. It doesn't always have to be part of a flower. That's what I want to say, you know. Um, and in, in these, I want to make sure you see some, you see some of these because um, um, these leaves here, um, can, you, can you see it this way? Okay. So these are the most fun leaves to do. They're broken. And if you can, you know, challenge yourself to do one of these, um, I mean, it, it's, it's like eating candy. I, that's terrible to say, but I love doing these things. I mean, I look for the crummiest looking leaf, and then I want to challenge myself to see if I can really get all the values and all the nuances and the spots and everything else. Um, here's a red leaf. Here's a simple sort of green. And you can see the vein structure is very unique and different. Hydrangeas, I hate them. I, I do not like hydrangeas. How many of you have ever tried to paint a hydrangea? Not a hydrangea, I mean a hosta. A hosta, I'm sorry. Oh, oh. Hosta, I mean hosta. That's what I was putting my hand on my hosta here. Oh, I don't like hostas. <laughs> and, and you'll get, and you'll get you know, a feeling for different leaves. This is similar to the one I'm, I'm showing you now. Okay? And you can see the red parts. There's, at the, in the serrations, I have to put some reds. Um, you see the dry brush in the lily of the valley? Because um, in, a, in a leaf that I'm showing you tonight, um, there's not a lot of dry brush. But in a strap leaf, like a tulip, like the one I, I brought one here, um, this is incomplete, but it was my neighbor's tulip and it was all twisted that way and I thought what, what fun that would be. Um, but the next step that I have to, to take on this is to start to do some dry brush. And whether it ever ends up in a frame is questionable, but it's fun to play with these things, you know? You, you start to look at leaves a little differently, um, and you see them, too, in the composition. Um, you, you've got to consider them in the composition. You know, you've got to, you know, decide, just like we do when we have a flower, what is going to be the center of the interest. But um, now here is the finished, uh, I did those yesterday, <laughs> but uh, here is the finished um, piece of where I started in showing you this rose leaf. See it? Can you see it? 
and um, it was a grouping of, um, of rose leaves or whatever. Okay, so we'll go back to our leaf here. And, and remember too, the other thing that's really important that I want to make sure that I point out uh, and brought this specifically for that reason. Um, it's not just how to paint a leaf, but the, the role of a leaf in a composition. Um, I've learned the hard way that the, leaf, the leaves have to lead you to the center of interest if you have a flower. And here's a good example of a mess. All right, this is the mess. Okay, I just want to I'm going to put it flat like that. Um, can you see that the leaves, they just don't work? I mean, I got that far and I looked and I thought, the leaves are not supporting the flowers. I mean, somebody's gonna look at this and all they're gonna see are leaves. Um, and so I began to work on it again and, and trying to develop uh, a little bit better placement uh, of the leaves and I still wasn't happy with this. So, um, but that's an important fact. Now this, um, turn this one over here. This one is in process right now, but I brought it because I wanted to show you that in this particular composition, I have attempted to point the leaves towards the flower and to support the flower in a way that's sort of comforting to the flower. Um, I, that's the only way I know how to say it. It's like, I don't want uh, the leaves going out here. I want the leaves saying, look at the, look at the rose, okay? Look at the rose. And, and that takes a lot of thought because I don't know about all of you, but I want to paint so badly. <laughs> I'm in such a hurry to paint that I will rush the planning. I'll rush the planning. And there's nothing better you can do than to, to spend time planning, thinking, uh, looking, um, sketching. Don't just, you know, you know, you all know that, I'm sure. Um, I tend to be a little impatient, I think. I think I've always been impatient. And so I get into trouble, <laughs> which is not, not good. Um, okay. So uh, let's, how are we, how we for time? We're good? We're good. We're doing good. Oh, good. I want to just show you the serrations, too, um, as we get um, a little further along on this. And um, my particular, um, what I like to do is um, I do mask a little bit. Um, I'll mask if it's a hole. And, and I want to surround the hole with, um, uh, you know, a little brown, a little bit of, you know, I want irregular crinkling that's happening in the leaf. So let me get my, my bottle here. And I like alizarin, um, I like alizarin red, and I have um, some, oh, I'm trying to think what the name of it is. It's, um, it's a violet. It's, um, I'm trying to think which one it is. It's, I think it's Windsor Violet and a little bit of um, alizarin, a little more violet. You're looking for something that's, that's kind of, uh, has a little bit of a is a little bit on the red, okay, because this is, there's a lot of uh, red on this particular leaf on the edges. And I'm just going to put a little bit of, sometimes a little bit of green helps to pull that. Now that's better. That's, that, I like that better um, because these serrations are, they're more, they're purpley red, but they're dull. So you don't want anything bright. So that's about right. And of course, you know, I'll immediately go to my pail here and, um, you know, look at it and think, is that what I want? And, um, and decide. 
And if I have the visual in front of me, um, sometimes, or I have the actual leaf, it's better to have the actual leaf, I can put it up against the leaf. That's a great color for, look at that, for that, um, for this leaf here, for this hibiscus. That's all, that's pretty close. And then you'd have to add some green. Um, it's a little bright. Um, so for the serrations, and for the areas that are, that are um, uh, holes, you know, where they're tearing, the leaf is torn. Um, and, you know, don't overlook leaves that, you know, as you saw, but don't overlook leaves that are all torn and, and messed up. They are ch the most challenging. So I'll just, um, sometimes I like to just wet. Um, and of course, this is not done. I should, I'm just, you know, showing you how I would do it is um, on some of these is just to um, just touch the, 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 the edge, the, the outside of the, the leaf. And I'll go over it more than once, probably go over it a few times. And, and you're trying to, you want to always soften everything. So I would, you know, always get my paper towel here. Not too. And so I just pull it down. And it gives it a nice, it's a nice finish on a rose leaf, because a lot of them do have this, this little um, color on the, on their, on the tips. And you can, you can paint from inside out also. It's like that. The other thing I'll mention to you all is if you're, if you're drawn to this kind of thing, if, I mean, this intrigues you, um, the um, Association of Botanical, uh, the American Association of Botanical Artists um, just finished their second year of classes um, that are online. And it's called the ASBA. I've got some of their booklets up, up on the table. And I just finished a week with them. I took 12 classes. <laughs> I'm serious. It was like, I thought I was going to see triple. Um, but I stuck it out. There are 12 one-hour classes, and they are fantastic. And next, <coughs> next year, hopefully, I'm hoping next year they'll do the same. But it's a wonderful way to get some art instruction, and these are the best in the entire world, really, the, the best. And uh, so um, look, at, look up their website, and... Um, And so you, that's, excuse me? ASC? No, um, ASBA, the Association of, the American Association of Botanical Artists. Um, this is their, um, uh, let's see, right there, um, the publication that they put out, um, and pass that around. Um, and most of them are, most of them are British or European, which is interesting because most of botan the botanical, the really top botanical artists are uh, in Europe. And I don't know why that has to be, but um, that seems to be the, um, the, the, the way that things go. So you don't want to overdo these serrations. They really should be just, um, should just blend it in and I haven't finished the leaf, of course, so they'll, they'll blend in. And then you always want to have, you know, you probably want to put a little bit at the top, too. Most of them do have color on the, um, on the edges. And so you want to get that color. Um, and then I like to soften everything. I don't like um, hard edges, unless they're really called for. And so you have a pretty edge to that, that, that leaf when you do that. Um, so, any thoughts or questions? Anything that, um, do you, has it, how many of you have painted botanical leaves? I mean, really detailed, okay. And, once. yeah, <laughs> once. <laughs> Is it something that you're, um, um, has anybody afraid, are you afraid of them? Anybody afraid of them? Yeah. 
<laughs> You're afraid of it. Yeah, you know, I, I was just interested. Um, you only use, um, you don't use like um, cold press or anything like that. Have you tried your Lisa cold press? Um, I just don't think that I could get the lifting okay. that I, I need for, you know, and I'm so used to now the hot press. Yeah. Although there was a time when I worked on nothing but cold press. Okay. And I think if you're doing abstracts or you're doing, um, uh, you know, I used to do, some of you have seen my website, you've seen the orb paintings I do. I love doing orbs. Um, I, that's the opposite of, of, of leaves, but um, then, yeah, I think cold press works better for that. But for something like this, um, the hot, you can't beat the hot press. And there is all kinds of, you know, you, you'll hear every British botanical artist tell you, oh, you know, I like this one, but oh, they've been, they're not good anymore. You know, the last three years they've been really bad. They're producing a bad product. And it's hard to keep track of, of, of what you can depend on. So Archer's to me is just about as dependable as, as I've, you know, I've used it for years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hopefully it will still be available because they say we're running, <laughs> supplies are running short. Do you think you could live without your arches paper? I don't think I could. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, um, and I use artist grade paints. Um, um, unfortunately, I've got about a thousand of them because I've been, you know, you know how it is at, over the years, you end up uh, with more tubes than you like to to own. Yeah. So do you think you might want to try this? Any of you think you might like to try it? Yes. Yeah. So if you do, you need to start a file, okay? What you want to do is press some leaves. You know, do some pressings um, and uh, keep them in a notebook and do some leaf rubbings with, you know, with some graphite. And um, and start to look at them and the variety of leaves because there's so many. And let's see, I, we have some time. I'll go over here. Um, the um, the variety is is the thing I love. You can never get bored. And flowers are the same. You can never get bored with flowers. Although sometimes I get a little tired of, you know, a particular flower and want to paint something different. Do you ever work on like, mushrooms or fungus? Um, things like that, which is a whole different thing for the leaves, I know. It's funny that you say that because um, I took a class from the ASBA last week on mushrooms and fungus. <laughs> and I looked at it and I thought, uh, I, I stuck it, I stuck it, stuck it out, you know, but it's, it's, not, it's not for me. Name. It's not my, yeah, it's just, but there are some artists that, that specialize in fungus. And, and I found a lot of fellows, a lot of guys that are botanical painters, they do um, things like that. Oh, it's a more of a guy thing than it is a girl thing. I mean, we like roses and hydrangeas. <laughs> I like fungi. You like fungi? <laughs> I, I've done some fungi paintings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, branches are fun to do. Oh. Branches are, are, are fun to do and to try to get the realism into to them. Um, they're very difficult, you know, especially if they have, you know, um, uh, mold growing on them and whatever. And, but, but the challenge is, I love the challenge of seeing how realistic I can get it, you know, how, how, how can I push it to that level of realism. But at the same time, you have to be very, very careful about the composition. That's the, the problem I've had honestly, is that I get so caught up in the actual painting of the flower or the leaf that I lose, you know, lose my sense of, is the composition working? So now I'm, I'm trying to be much more, um, I'm trying to be careful to do as many renditions of the drawing as I need to. If it takes 10 drawings, it takes 10 drawings. And one of the things, um, um, you know, I, I, I still use as a product that I used when I was a rug cooker. Um, sometimes I start with a um, rapid resizer uh, rendition of a, of a painting that I want to do. Any of you ever heard of rapid resizer? Mm -hmm. No? Well, and when, you're te when you're in textiles, you have to, in, in order to do a rug, I have 
rugs in my house that are floor to ceiling. In order to do a rug that big, um, you have to create um, tiles. Well, in other words, you need to take an image and create multiple tiles of the image so that you can, you can put them together and you can do a huge drawing that you're going to put on at the back of your linen or burlap or whatever you're using. And so this product, if I wanted to, say, paint a particular subject, I would put it into this software system and it would spit out as many tiles as I needed. So in other words, eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, sometimes I would get 25 or I'd get 30. And then I would put them on the floor and piece them together and um, start working the drawing before I put it on the linen or the burlap. Because if you waste linen, you're wasting a lot of money. And I used to do that for, pe for people who wanted me to design the rugs for them. So it was labor intensive work. And this is easy in comparison to what I used to do, where I had to stand in front of a dye pot every day. Rosie's seen some of my textiles and, um, and they're, they're very um, labor intensive. And it does put a lot of pressure on your neck and on your body. And so uh, in some ways I felt that I needed to leave it because uh, the head bending, you know, when you're, and you sort of have a tendency, a lot of rug hookers get uh, disabilities because they're always leaning like this. So, um, but it's a niche art form that's out there. And those that are into it are into it, let me tell you. So, Did you use uh, the old wooden shuttles? Because I um, used to do what I learned from my grandmother. Yeah, I never used the, the we, wooden shuttles. I stripped the old pieces of wool. And yep, yep. Um, I never used the wooden shuttles. I used an old, old wooden hook. Um, you know, when I was a little girl, I'd sit on her lap with, and we cut up blankets and we cut up all kinds of things. They used everything they had. They didn't do hand dyed wools. Right. I mean, it was caught up the, the old bathrobe that they'd worn for, for a dozen years. But, you know, it was, a, it, it, it was a, um, a labor, very heavy, very a physically demanding art form. Um, lots of lifting of pails of water. I, I had a wool business that was huge. And I wrote three books for the, for the, for the rug hooking world. So um, it was very, very um, easy to, and, and I'll tell you who, you know, who my, my first watercolor teacher was? Well, I'll show you who my first, I, I have it here. Some of you may know who this is. Um, the, um, uh, the first watercolor teacher I had, it was when I was at the Ringling School of Art and Design, and I followed this man all around Florida. Do you all know, remember yeah, Terry, Terry Madden? Madden. Mm -hmm. And I became one of his, um, his certified teachers. And um, he, he, he's no longer with us, he's passed. But um, I really liked Terry. And so when I wasn't in school, I would follow him to a workshop. And he lived in Florida. So um, that's, that yeah, yeah. I have all of his books. <laughs> if anybody would like, like them. I'm going to have to find somebody who wants them someday. Too. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I painted every single one of those paintings over, over the years. And so, um, but he was different. And he was, um, he didn't do a lot of, of course he didn't do botanical, he did a lot of landscapes and seascapes. He did fish and he did flowers and um, he was a character. And he was a real showman. Um, but, but I learned a lot from him. And, um, and I liked him a lot, so. So you see, I had an overdose of watercolor after I gave up the fiber. It was like, it was, you know, it was all out. <laughs> How do you do your rubbing? Um, the rubbing I do, um, what I do is I take the, um, I use uh, not tissue paper, but um, tracing paper. And I put the uh, leaf, underneath the tracing paper with the, uh, the, the part that is elevated, you know, because this is your, you don't have as much elevation in the front part of a leaf, but in the back, um, and then you take a soft, you know, eight, you want a real, real soft pencil, and then you run over it. 
And, and then you have an instant copy of the vein structure of that leaf that you can save. And then in the winter, if you don't know, if you don't remember the vein structure, you'll have record. So it's very, very helpful. And I'm always doing rubbings. And, um, uh, you know, I've got a huge book full of rubbings. So I never really feel like I'm going to be um, without a reference. That's, these, are my, these rubbings, are, they are my reference, basically. So do you ever take your beautiful leaves and then use them in some kind of collage or something? Or do you just, I don't mean just, but do you paint them only? Um, yeah, I mean, that, this particular one that I showed you is, um, the, 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 I call it falling leaves. It's, it's sort of a collage. And uh, the picture now, I'll, I'll just pass it around. I was going to bring it, but um, I staged it on a bulletin board. Okay, I'll pass it around. And then I, um, took photographs of it, and then I did it in color pencil. It's done in color pencil. And it took about a year to do. And color pencil is something I do when I, I'm tired of painting. It's, it's a very um, relaxing, slow kind of thing. Um, sometimes when I'm watching television, I can do a little color pencil. Um, but it's a very, very big painting. And, but it was so much fun to do. And, um, you know, I've had a lot of people, you know, really enjoy looking at it. It's, it was just fun to arrange, and it was fun to photograph, and then it was fun to, to, to draw. So um, leaves have a lot of potential. They don't have to just support a flower. They can be, in their, their own right, um, a composition. So, you know, don't forget that if you you know, think that um, you don't want to do the flower, but you'd rather do the leaves. The leaves them in themselves. Are, are, are wonderful. Okay, and then another question. In, in the very beginning, you, you were saying that sometimes you use a very sharp, dark green to accentuate the leaf veins. Well, so when would you do that if you did that? It's, I would do it when, um, here's my, uh, you know, yeah, this is, I want to make sure I got the right one. Um, I would do it when I had narrowed the vein and narrowed the vein and thought I had almost narrowed it to the very, with a paint. And then I look and go, I just need to get a little tighter there. And then I go in with my, just a little bit. I just create uh, with a, a Faber-Castell, a little bit of, you know, nobody, nobody knows, you know, a little bit of, um, uh, I'll, you know, I add a little bit dark or whatever in there, and nobody knows. And this will work with water. The, the difference is Prismacolor is wax-based, and this is not. So you don't want to use the Prismacolors. Um, but it's a very handy tool. You can buy sepia, which is a dark, dark sort of brown, which also helps in certain in instances. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing wood or you're doing branches and things like that, I've used some of the browns just on the watercolor, just to enhance certain places um, that are difficult to do with paint. Okay, and then what particular color is that green? This one is, uh, this is chromium, chromium green, okay. um, but there's, you know, you want to get the darkest one you can to use okay. it, this is pretty dark, um, to use it to tighten your, um, your veins. You want to get the darkest one you can. Sepia would be a good one to get because sepia is not green, but it's brown, and it, but it also will be, is just enough sometimes to set off a vein. That's a watercolor pencil? Or it's a no, they're Faber-Castell, they're regular color pencils. Color um, okay. Yeah, it's, um, it's just that this one, um, you, you'll never know, and you put water over it, that there's a little bit of it there. Okay. Um, and I don't use much, when I use it, I use it for a little tiny spot or something that's bothering me or tighten up the vein a little bit, um, I will go to this. Um, I might, let's say, um, let's just say in here, you see this area? That maybe let's say I painted it, but it's not dark enough. And I would take circular strokes, and you see how I would just lay in the cushion, I'd make that cushion a little darker at the base um, with, this, with the pencil. Um, and then I might put some washes over it. Nobody, nobody knows. I, I can tell you nobody would know it. Nobody's ever said anything to me. And I don't use it very much. Or in here, let's say, 
I'm not happy with um, how dark that is. I, want, I really want to intensify that. And sometimes, because you see, in some of these side veins, they're not perfectly straight. That's important to remember too. See, see how that bulges? This one that I'm, I'm just, uh, with the pencil is. See how it has, it rolls? They're not, they're not straight lines. So there, there's irregular, there's an irregularity to, um, to the veins. They, they, they roll, okay? So if you wanna get, you don't wanna, you don't want a straight line. Um, you, you really want to, um, to have the bumpiness, this look of bumpiness. And the more you put in these uh, shadows, the more you'll see the bumpiness sort of comes, comes about. Um, and then once in a while, I mean, I'll, you know, I might just sort of put a little tiny hint as to where I'm going to put, put those little veins. But most, for the most part, I use very little of this, very little. Um, sometimes the, hard, the hardest leaves to do, anybody want to guess what the hardest leaf to do is? Um, well, a fall leaf in watercolor, a, a really bright fall leaf, because if they have a lot of spots on them, sometimes you have to use um, <coughs> masking, um, then sometimes these, this helps. When I use this, um, let's say um, you can use regular screen, okay? You can use, get a piece of screen from your house. And let's just say, um, I'm gonna, let's just say I wanna... Um, Did you make that? Um, I bought this, but you know, I have no Where idea. Where did you buy it? Because I need it for my glass work. <laughs> <laughs> I have it's no it's idea. Cool. It's been in my, my painting box forever. Um, but um, I know people have used screen, because uh -huh. all it is is screen. Uh -huh. And if you could somehow s take a piece of screen and put it between two pieces of wood and clamp right. it down, it would be the same. Yeah. But, but just see, say you had some, you had some spots. Mm -hmm. You needed, a, you wanted spots. Okay, let's, so let's just say I got some, some sort of purpley spots on my leaf. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there you go, there they are. Oh, fantastic. And what's great is they're all irregular. Huh. Yes. So huh. you, you, I'm not, um, you know, you're not getting regular spots like when you drip. You're, mm -hmm. you're getting a really good, um, irregular looking spot. And that's why I use this for fall leaves. Okay. Because you can you know, cover the outside and then you can just um, decide where you want to blow the color. Because a lot of times it's, there's a lot of spots. Okay. And, and also for wood. For wood, it's, it's very good. So you're all going to go out here to, to the hardware yeah. store. <laughs> you're all going to the hardware store tonight. That's worth the price of admission. <laughs> <laughs>